Leave the mirror and change your face. Leave the world alone and change. Your conceptions of yourself. I am. All things, when they are admitted. Are made manifest by the light, for everything. That is made manifest is light. The light is consciousness. Consciousness is one, manifesting in legions of forms or levels of consciousness. There is no one that is not all that is, for consciousness, though expressed in an infinite series of levels, is not divisional. There is no real separation or gap in consciousness. I am cannot be divided. I may conceive myself to be a rich man, a poor man, a beggar man or a thief, but the center of my being remains the same, regardless of the concept I hold of myself. At the center of manifestation, there is only one I am manifesting in legions of forms or concepts of itself and I am that I am. I am is the self-definition of the Absolute, the foundation on which everything rests. I am is the first cause substance. I am is the self-definition of God. I am is a feeling of permanent awareness. The very center of consciousness is the feeling of I am. I may forget who I am, where I am, what I am, but I cannot forget that I am. The awareness of being remains, regardless of the degree of forgetfulness of who, where and what I am. I am is that which, amid unnumbered forms, is ever the same. This great discovery of cause reveals that, good or bad, man is actually the arbiter of his own fate, and that it is his concept of himself that determines the world in which he lives, and his concept of himself is his reactions to life. In other words, if you are experiencing ill health, knowing the truth about cause, you cannot attribute the illness to anything other than to the particular arrangement of the basic cause substance, an arrangement which, was produced by your reactions to life, and, is defined by your concept I am unwell. This is why you are told let the weak man say, I am strong, for by his assumption, the cause substance, I am, is rearranged and must, therefore, manifest that which its rearrangement affirms. This principle governs every aspect of your life, be it social, financial, intellectual, or spiritual. I am is that reality to which, whatever happens, we must turn for an explanation of the phenomena of life. It is IAM's concept of itself that determines the form and scenery of its existence. Everything depends upon its attitude towards itself, that which it will not affirm as true of itself cannot awaken in its world. That is, your concept of yourself, such as, I am strong, I am secure, I am loved, determines the world in which you live. In other words, when you say, I am a man, I am a father, I am an American, you are not defining different IAMs, you are defining different concepts or arrangements of the one cause substance, the one I am. Even in the phenomena of nature, if the tree were articulate, it would say, I am a tree, an apple tree, a fruitful tree. When you know that consciousness is the one and only reality, conceiving itself to be something good, bad or indifferent, and becoming that which it conceived itself to be, you are free from the tyranny of second causes, free from the belief that there are causes outside of your own mind that can affect your life. In the state of consciousness of the individual is found the explanation of the phenomena of life. If man's concept of himself were different, 
everything in his world would be different. His concept of himself being what it is, everything in his world must be as it is. Thus it is abundantly clear that there is only one I am and you are that I am. And while I am is infinite, you, by your concept of yourself, are displaying only a limited aspect of the infinite I am. It is only by a change of consciousness, by actually changing your concept of yourself, that you can build more stately mansions, the manifestations of higher and higher concepts. By manifesting is meant experiencing the results of these concepts in your world. It is of vital importance to understand clearly just what consciousness is. The reason lies in the fact that consciousness is the one and only reality, it is the first and only cause substance of the phenomena of life. Nothing has existence for man save through the consciousness he has of it. Therefore, it is to consciousness you must turn, for it is the only foundation on which the phenomena of life can be explained. If we accept the idea of a first cause, it would follow that the evolution of that cause could never result in anything foreign to itself. That is, if the first cause substance is light, all its evolutions, fruits and manifestations would remain light. The first cause substance being consciousness, all its evolutions, fruits and phenomena must remain consciousness. All that could be observed would be a higher or lower form or variation of the same thing. In other words, if your consciousness is the only reality, it must also be the only substance. Consequently, what appears to you as circumstances, conditions and even material objects is really only the product of your own consciousness. Nature, then, as a thing or a complex of things external to your mind, must be rejected. You and your environment cannot be regarded as existing separately. You and your world are one. Therefore, you must turn from the objective appearance of things to the subjective center of things, your consciousness, if you truly desire to know the cause of the phenomena of life, and how to use this knowledge to realize your fondest dreams. In the midst of the apparent contradictions, antagonisms and contrasts of your life, there is only one principle at work, only your consciousness operating. Difference does not consist in variety of substance, but in variety of arrangement of the same cause substance, your consciousness. The world moves with motiveless necessity. By this is meant that it has no motive of its own but is under the necessity of manifesting your concept, the arrangement of your mind, and your mind is always arranged in the image of all you believe and consent to as true. The rich man, poor man, beggar man or thief are not different minds, but different arrangements of the same mind, in the same sense that a piece of steel, when magnetized, differs not in substance from its demagnetized state, but in the arrangement and order of its molecules. A single electron revolving in a specified orbit constitutes the unit of magnetism. When a piece of steel or anything else is demagnetized, the revolving electrons have not stopped. Therefore, the magnetism has not gone out of existence. There is only a rearrangement of the particles, so that they produce no outside or perceptible effect. When particles are arranged at random, mixed up in all directions, the substance is said to be demagnetized, but when particles are marshaled in ranks so that a number of them face in one direction, the substance is a magnet. Magnetism is not generated, it is displayed. Health, wealth, 
beauty and genius are not created, they are only manifested by the arrangement of your mind, that is, by your concept of yourself, and your concept of yourself is all that you accept and consent to as true. What you consent to can only be discovered by an uncritical observation of your reactions to life. Your reactions reveal where you live psychologically, and where you live psychologically determines how you live here in the outer visible world. The importance of this in your daily life should be immediately apparent. The basic nature of the primal cause is consciousness. Therefore, the ultimate substance of all things is consciousness.